Rex files are audio files that have been sliced up into individual components. And as you change the tempo of your session, the slices will line up with the bars and beats and stick to your tempo. That is if you have set things up properly. And I'll show you a little bit about how to do that in this video. To start with, we want to pull up our preferences. You'll notice an option here under the import section import Rex files as clip groups. That means that when you bring in a file, you don't see all those individual slices, although they're all there. You only see one big audio file. As you change the tempo of your session, you may smush those slices together, and Pro Tools can automatically create fades between the slices. The type of fade you create is on the editing page under here, Rex just like I can set the default wave shape for fade ins, fade outs, and cross fades, I can do it for Rex files also. One other option, drag and drop from desktop conforms to session tempo. If I have this checked, then as I drag in Rex files, they will automatically sync to my tempo. So let's go ahead and drag in some Rex files. We'll start by dragging in a drum beat I have here, and Rex files usually end in REX or RX2. So this is a New Orleans drum beat. I'll bring it in. I get asked if I want to grab the original tempo from the file. Rex files are recorded at a certain tempo and it knows what tempo they were recorded at. And it asks me if I want to change the session tempo to the tempo of my file. And I do. And it so happens I was already at 90 beats per minute. This is at 90 beats per minute. And as you can see, it's a perfect four bar loop. Now let's bring in another Rex file. This time we'll bring in a little guitar riff, and this was recorded at a different speed. But since I have that conform to session tempo option checked in preferences, when I bring it in, it automatically lines up to my bars and beats. Let me use my loop tool to loop it out to four bars. I'll use my grid to lock it there. And let's see what it sounds like. Now remember, these are actually a bunch of slices that are grouped together. This little indicator here shows me that this is a clip group. Now we'll talk about clip groups in the editing audio tutorial, but they're just a group of slices or audio clips that have been linked together so that they move as one. Now what happens when I change my tempo? Well, let's go up to this tempo slider and drag Look at that, even though I'm moving back and forth higher and lower tempos, I'm always getting a four bar loop. Or if I drag it slower. Now we're hearing gaps between the slices, but at least it's synced to tempo. I probably wouldn't go that slow, maybe like here. Now, one final important point about Rex files. The track that a Rex file is placed on should be a tick based track. We have sample based tracks and tick based tracks. Sample based tracks will align your audio to a specific sample point. And as you change the tempo, the audio clip will stay aligned to wherever it was aligned before from a sample perspective. If it's set to ticks, it will always align to the same bar, beat, and tick. So if I say samples right now, let me move this to bar two. And I'm going to turn on samples from this drop down. And you can see that I'm at somewhere around 15,000 samples, about 14,000 something. All right. Now the track has been set to samples. I'm going to change my tempo from 72 back to 90. And if you look, this piece of audio is no longer aligned to bar two. And in fact, my slices are all off as well. 
it's stuck to the same sample pointer, 14,000, what have you. Let me undo that and change this to tick mode. And now when I go from 72 up to 90, it stays at the same bar and beat. So because you want your rex files to sync to your session tempo, you usually want to have your rex files placed on tick-based tracks.